It's time for Living with Victory, a program of hope and encouragement brought to you by Living with Victory Ministries and listeners like you. In a moment, we'll join your hosts, Laureen and Tony Giorgio, for today's message of perseverance and hope. So if life has left you kicking up dust, keep listening, keep looking up and grab your umbrella, get ready to sing in the Welcome to Living with Victory, where life isn't about waiting for the storms to pass. It's about learning to have peace, joy, and victory in the midst of the storm because Jesus is your umbrella. Hey, welcome everyone to another edition of Living with Victory. And today we're going to have the Divine Armor of God Part 2. And before we get started, I want to remind you how to contact us real quickly though if you want to send us a donation if you want to tell us how we're doing you can email us at livingwithvictory at gmail.com i know you don't have something to write with but i'll repeat this later on livingwithvictory at gmail.com and also you can go to our website livingwithvictory.org and hit the contact button and send us a message okay billy graham his devotional called Wisdom for Each Day. Here's a page from the book itself. It sort of segues in, into our topic. It says, fit for battle. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. And, and it's from our scriptures, Ephesians 6 through 11 right now. And he's saying, don't doubt for a moment the devil's existence and don't doubt for a moment that he is your enemy. Forget the cute cartoon images of an impish figure with a pitchfork and a red suit. Satan is absolutely malicious and evil. He has great influence over this world. We know that. The Bible says your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And that was 1 Peter 5, 8. Satan is strong and he is determined to make sure you stumble. He is also clever and scheming, bent on deceiving and outmaneuvering us at every turn. But we are not defenseless. God has provided us with all the armor we need. Armor so strong that Satan and his servants cannot penetrate it. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, the word of God, prayer, Every one of these has a role in defeating our adversary. And you can read on Paul's full description of it. What piece of God's armor, Mr. Graham is saying, are missing in your life? Don't let another day go by without putting on the full armor of God. And today we're going to continue with that armor. Hey, Laureen. Hi. 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 I'm so happy you're all joining us today. If you want to read the full scripture, it is Ephesians six ten through 18. Now, last week we spoke about the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness. This week we will be speaking about the shoes of peace, the shield of faith, and the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. Ephesians 15 says, and having strapped on your feet the gospel of peace in preparation to face the enemy with firm-footed stability and the readiness produced by the good news. These boots are a reference to the Roman soldier's shoes, which was studded with hobnails to give them stability on the battlefield. The toe of the shoe was made of iron. Exactly. And the back of it was made of brass. Exactly. I mean, we're not, we're not talking of a flip-flop here. <laughs> right. The preparation of the gospel of peace signifies a resolved frame of heart, which will enable us to walk with a steady pace. Matthew Henry's commentary, peace at all cost. 
The minute we allow any unrest which the enemy tries to cause and sets us up to be upset, we lose that peace and wrong decisions are made. We need to send him on his way in the mighty name of Jesus. Do whatever we need to do to keep our peace. Let me give you just a quick rundown on the shoes from my application Bible. Right. It says readiness to spread the good news. And it's Satan who wants us to think that telling others the good news is a worthless and hopeless task. The size of the task is too big. This negative responses are too much to handle. But the shoes God gives us are the motivation to continue to proclaim the true peace that is available in God. News everyone needs to hear. Okay, now Ephesians 16 is talking about the shield of faith. Above all, lift up the protective shield of faith with which you can extinguish all all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Here the Greek word refers to the large Roman soldier's shield designed to protect the entire body. It had an iron frame and was covered in several layers of leather. When soaked in water before a battle, the shields could put out the fiery missiles thrown at them by the enemy. The arrows were flaming arrows, number one. The thing was made of heavy wood, so they figured they could penetrate it. But they went one up on them Mm -hmm. with the leather and then wetting it to counteract that moisture. What kind of person was standing there holding? I wouldn't want to meet him (laughs) on a battlefield. Holy moly. I mean, to have that strength. You know, that's an interesting comment because we should make Satan quake in his boots That's when right. we put our feet on the floor in the morning we to get up. We have the armor to exactly. counteract. We are not victims. We are warriors. That's right. We're talking about mm-hmm. the shield. The use is of your faith, okay? What we see are Satan's attacks in the form of insults. You know, we've had that. Setbacks and temptations. I mean, you lose a job, divorces, you, you name it, financial woes. But the shield of faith protects us from Satan's fiery arrows. With God's perspective, we can see beyond our circumstances and know that ultimate victory is ours. Because, like we keep saying, Jesus is your umbrella. He's your shield covering you. Your faith in him will withstand. You may not think so at the time, but believe me, you can survive with this armor. You know, we cannot please God without faith. This is the most important one of all of the armor. Just think about each piece that you are putting on and realize that it is Christ himself. When you think of that, you automatically start to feel stronger because you know you're not alone. You're not out there fighting this battle by yourself. Now, the helmet of salvation. Oh, I love this because... This goes on to cover your mind. Salvation is hope, which has salvation for its object. He would tempt us to despair, Satan. But good hope keeps us trusting in God and rejoicing in him. When you have that hope on, it's like the blood of Jesus over you. He, you're sealed, and you have the choice to think on what you want to think on. You don't have to think on the negative, and you don't have to be angry at someone. God is giving you the option to choose. You know, in in Proverbs, he says, choose life, not death. Let me cover a little bit of what it says in my application Bible about the helmet. Its use is for salvation. Satan wants to make us doubt God that he can't do anything for us. We're in the trenches and we're getting defeated. Jesus and our salvation, he makes it seem like it's nothing. But the helmet protects our mind from doubting God's saving work for us. It's there, and Satan wants to make you think when you lose your job or you, you're in a process of a divorce, you have illness, you just lost a loved one, he can't do anything for you. That just simply isn't true. And if you arm yourself with these spiritual tools, 
you can't go wrong. The helmet also says that when you are tempted to despair, remember the good hope keeps us trusting in God and most of all rejoicing in him. Praise and rejoicing and thanksgiving are very, very mighty weapons against Satan's attacks. Exactly. You have to realize where Paul wrote this to the Ephesians. He was in jail. Yeah, he wasn't out there sunning himself. I mean, he was, (laughs) you know, I mean, he had certain privileges as citizen of Rome. He could write letters. He might be able to have visitors. But he was facing this man of armor, this, this Roman centurion. He was writing this to encourage the churches. You see, and and that makes a big difference. Paul wasn't any different than we are. He had his moments. That's right. When you realize and keep your mind on God and keep looking in his face, just keeping your eyes on him, that's where your power comes from. Don't look to the left or the right. Don't look at your circumstances. And he's writing here, you know, in Ephesians. He's saying, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins gird about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Now that that's from a man who is in prison, who is facing all of this, he's encouraging everybody else. And we live in a time where we are in a prison of sorts with what's coming against us in the world as Christians. And we need to arm ourselves spiritually with all of this in order to combat everything and anything that comes against us, bar none. He knew where his help came from. That's right. Because he never could have gone through that without without God. No. And the best part of all now, the sword of the spirit, the word of God. Living with Victory, brought to you today by Teague's Grocery and Cafe, serving Maggie Valley since 1965, with delivery now available through Grubhub. Teague's is Maggie Valley's only grocery store. They're located at 130 Soco Road near the eastern entrance of the Great Smoky Mountain National Park and the Blue Ridge Parkway. Drop in for breakfast or lunch at the Corner Cafe, featuring a variety of daily specials. Teague's Grocery and Cafe is open Sunday through Thursday from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Friday and Saturday, 7 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. Call 828-926-1147. And by the way, today's program is also available on GodTube, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, iHeart, and at livingwithvictory.podbean.com. The Word of God is our fiery dart. You know how Tony was talking about Satan's fiery darts? Well, the Word of God is our fiery dart, more powerful than anything the enemy can throw at us. We need to hide the scripture in our heart. Memorizing scripture will help when you need to resist the enemy. Quoting scripture to get rid of Satan is very powerful. Jesus did it when he fasted 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness, and Satan tempted him to forsake his father. You may not be able to remember at the time word for word, but when you're reading his word, just know that he will never forsake you, that he loves you. And if you have to paraphrase it out to him, just do it. Do it in his name. I just want to read something from the commentary from the Application Bible, chapter 6, 19 through 20. It says, Under discouraged and undefeated, Paul wrote powerful letters of encouragement from prison. Paul did not ask the Ephesians to pray that his chains would be removed, but that he would continue to speak boldly for Christ in spite of them, in spite of his chains. God can use us in any circumstance to do this, even as we pray for a change in our circumstances. We should also pray that God will accomplish his plan through us right where we are, right at the time of our need. 
knowing God's eternal purpose for us helps us through the difficult times. That's some powerful advice there. Well, Ephesians 6.18 does say, with all prayer and petition, pray with specific requests at all times, on every occasion and in every season. And with this in view, stay alert with all perseverance and petition, interceding in prayer for all God's people. Prayer is so important. We could put on the armor, but if you don't stay in touch with God and talk to him on a regular basis, then you're really going to falter. But he wants to walk and talk with us constantly, plus giving us all this wonderful armor to put on. That's exactly what prayer is is it's talking to god through jesus christ talk you you've got friends you talk to all the time what's the matter with god <laughs> right i mean you don't have to be on a specific prayer or or recital during the day you can you could just say well i don't have time you know that's not true really it takes a few seconds to say jesus i love you jesus help me jesus thank you for being with me jesus cover me right now i'm going through some hard times that's a prayer when we do go to our secret place and that means wherever you are in your heart you could be sitting on a bus and praying you could be driving to work and praying you'd be walking down the street going shopping praying God's hearing you. He's walking right there with you. It's very easy when you are talking with him and you're putting on that armor to feel the peace, joy, and victory, even in the midst of the circumstance you may be going through right now. We know without a shadow of a doubt that he is with us and in control of all things. When we do what we can, we can trust God to do the rest. We are to just stand and be confident in him. Looking at each one of these pieces of armor and talking about prayer sounds very promising, and we all know we should be doing what we have been talking about. But do we really believe that this will make a difference in our lives and circumstances as, as they are right now? It's very personal. You, you have circumstances that are very real, and you know the dangers, This is very real, but so is God. Just to reinforce, if we have time, prayer, because it's really important, especially in our time. But it says in the commentary here in my application Bible, how can anyone pray all the time? Well, one way is to pray consistently is to make brief prayer your habitual response to every situation you meet throughout the day. Another way is to order the life around God's desires and teachings so that your very life becomes a prayer. You don't have to isolate yourself all the time from other people, like Laureen was saying, in order to pray consistently. So that this pretty much backs up what we're trying to tell you. You can make prayer your life End your life a prayer while living in a world that needs God's powerful influence. And boy, does it need his influence. Oh, it sure does. Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and active and full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword penetrating as far as the division of the soul and spirit, the completeness of a person, and of both joints and marrow, the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of the heart. So don't think that the word of God means nothing, you know, that was way back then. That's why God gave it the sword of the spirit as part of the armor the sword of the spirit it cuts right right to the marrow and the sword in in the bible here the use of it is the word of god like said and the the sword is the only weapon of offense there are times when we need to take the offensive against satan when we are tempted 
we need to trust in the truth of God's word. There that's right. But then that's the point of it. You know, do we believe in him or do we believe him? Do we believe his promises? Do we believe his word that he is true, that he is not going to fail us? You know, learning to trust him is the major problem because faith is hard. The way things are today, I know a lot of people have been hurt, and, you know, you open yourself up to trust, and you, you're, you're kind of leery to want to do that. But with God, you can trust him because he will never fail you, never fail you. You may not understand how he's walking you through your circumstances, and you may not understand how he's going to fix it, and it may not be the way you want it. But it, you will come out on the other side, and he will carry you. He, he wants to be with you and help you and love you and, and have a personal relationship. So just, you know, go towards him. Don't go away from him. When you feel the odds are all against you, there is Jesus. He knew we would need this armor to keep us from falling and giving up. Do not give up. Satan's attacks are real and can make you want to give up. But God, we need all the help we can get, and he has provided. Reach out and take his protection. We cannot do it without him. No, without a doubt. And, and, and where things have been lately with us in this country, I know, it, it, it's been kind of hard. We've been hit hard for our Christianity, but he is there to help us all the time. Remember that. He is your umbrella. We love you all, and I hope that we are proving the fact that Jesus is your umbrella. Help Lorraine and Tony in their ministry by becoming a Living with Victory partner. You can make a donation of any amount through PayPal at livingwithvictory.org or send your check to Living with Victory, P.O. Box 1982, Maggie Valley, North Carolina, 28751. That's Living with Victory, P.O. Box 1982, Maggie Valley, North Carolina, 28751. And remember, you can make a donation or purchase gas cards for Living with Victory's Fuel for Life program at Teague's Superette at 130 Soco Road in Maggie Valley. You've been listening to Living with Victory with Lorraine and Tony Giorgio, who for over 30 years have advocated for seriously ill children through Compassion Children's Foundation, today known as Living with Victory Ministries. Support for this radio ministry and our outreach programs comes from listeners like you. Many families that have children that need daily treatments for their illnesses are extremely challenged due to the cost of simply getting to the treatment facilities. Our Fuel for Life outreach supplies gas cards to families at four children's hospitals. You can support our outreach programs by sending your tax-deductible donations to Living with Victory, P.O. Box 1982, Maggie Valley, North Carolina, 28751. If you'd like to become a sponsor of this radio ministry, we'd love to hear from you as well. Thanks for listening. So if life has left you kicking up dust, keep listening, keep looking up and grab your umbrella, get ready to sing in the rain. is gathering showers of grace. Get ready to sing in the rain. The preceding program was brought to you by Teague's Superette and Cafe at 130 Soco Road in Maggie Valley. Call them at 828-926-1147. You can hear this program and others from Living with Victory Ministries on YouTube, GodTube, iTunes, Spotify, and at livingwithvictory.podbean.com.